This is going to be a great show, especially for single men and women who are trying to find the right avenue and mind frame to get ready for their spouse. God bless. Tune in. Show with Jackie Wayans. Inspiration through word and song for you. Hi, Jackie Wayans here with Don't Give Up and Win, and I am really excited to get into today's show with you. As many of you know, I wrote a book called Don't Give Up and Win, a survival guide to renewed virginity. Speaking to those of us who are separated, divorced, widowed, who have been in a relationship and now for the second time around we find ourselves single again, a place that we may have never thought we would be, and how I've learned to navigate through that journey for the past 16 years and holding on to abstinence and God's word. And our guest today is Dr. Brantley. Thanks for having me, Jackie. It's a pleasure to have you. you. You are not only pastor, but yes. you are also a certified marriage coach. I am. And author. All glory to God. So today we're going to be talking about single ladies. Get ready for your man. Get ready. <laughs> the thou shalt for dating mm -hmm. as you await, await your husband to be. Yes, that's right. That key word. Key word. Await, right? right? Um, and I know uh, Megan Good and uh, Devon Franklin have a wonderful book out as well called The Wait that talks about mm -hmm. their journey. Mm -hmm. Talk about your journey. You're married and, and happily so and did you guys wait before? Uh, and waited yeah. and uh, waited <laughs> and waited. Uh, but there were other issues that we had to deal with. But for most single women, it's understanding that if they rush, mm -hmm. uh, they're getting to I issues that they're not ready for. Because you first have to know yourself. Mm. And many women do not know themselves. And so they find a man to define them. Okay. And so you need to define yourself through the word, through scripture. And based on that, then God will send the Boaz at the right time mm -hmm. to see you and sweep you off your feet, of course. Well, that's why I use the word renewal. Yes. Because it is a time to renew your mind, renew your spirit, re is. renew damaged emotions. Uh, so many women have been damaged yeah. uh, uh, prior to relationship, uh, emotional abuse, uh, sexual abuse, mm -hmm. uh, and all People those abuses are there. Mm -hmm. And when that man comes in their life that they're not ready for sometimes, yeah. it just brings that explosion. And next thing they know, they're doing things, they're becoming something that they're not really are. And then the combination just keeps going, going, and going. Right. So I, I'm waiting. Yes, You waited before yes. marriage. In your counseling, are you, what, what are the benefits that you've seen out of couples who have waited? The benefits of waiting is that you get to open up the package on the wedding day versus okay. opening up before the wedding day. Okay. And, and then so many couples make intimacy their foundation. Mm -hmm. And that's not your foundation. Your foundation is a, a relationship. It's connectivity. That's what I teach uh, in my marriage counseling is being connected. Because if you're not connected, things are going to fall apart. But okay. in that connectedness, you have things of your past that haven't been really dealt with. And because they've been dealt with, you can't get connected to your uh, potential spouse. Exactly, exactly. And you know, many times we don't think we no. can renew certain areas yes. of our lives. We feel that the damage has oh, already been like done, preaching, don't you, right? Don't you? But that's not the case. If you give God the space to yes. move in that area, he yeah. can do it. And that's the key is that, will I trust God to work on me? I mean, uh, Ruth is a very powerful book mm. that talks about how she went through a point, her husband dies, she goes yeah. with her uh, mother-in-law, Naomi, yeah. and she waits. And because she waited properly, right. like a Boaz. I know, yeah. I know. Yeah. Everybody wants that Boaz, yeah. but... Um, there's a little tiny problem. Yes, what's that problem, girl? So, like, I'm in churches regularly, yes. and uh, <laughs> it's like 80% female. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. what's a girl to do, okay? We're, uh, we're told to be faithful, yeah. to be in ministry, yes. to, yes. to, to, to yes. and 80-20. Yes. Yeah. So. 80-20, and just because you find a man in church, let me say this, too. I'll okay. look at the camera here. Just because <laughs> yes, you look find at the camera. a guy in church doesn't mean... 
is the right one. Okay. Because yeah. a lot of these guys, sometimes they're roosters, sometimes they're foxes. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful of that too. So, But what I tell women to do, be faithful. Be mm -hmm. faithful to God. Uh, you do God stuff and God will give you at the right time, at the right moment, right. that man in your life. Right. And, and the true, the reverse is true. I mean, I have wonderful men yes. who contributed to my book sure. that are muscle bound yeah. and gorgeous and, yeah. and, and at the top of their industry who weren't afraid to say, no, I'm celibate now right. because I didn't do it like that the first time right. around. Right. And I suffered. Right. And the woman who could have been my queen sure. also suffered. Sure. Um, and men also have a voice in this. A lot of times we put it just on the female, but... Men have a voice too, and I know testosterone is doing quite well, is active, and I see, because men yeah. are very visual. Yeah. But it's that control to say, you know what? I want, but not now. I'm not ready myself. And if you really want to esteem a woman, uh, Proverbs says that a wife is a man's crown. So mm -hmm. if I want to esteem her, I'm going to do the right stuff so when it's placed on me, it's beautiful, it's not tarnished. I, I haven't done anything to corrupt what God has given me. I love it, I love it. So when we come back, we're going to get deeper yeah, into this deep. conversation and we are not going to sugarcoat it. No, no. All right, but I know from my own experience that it is a path of no regret. Correct. And that is the best path to take. So when we come back, we'll talk some more. <laughs> single by understanding that the opportunity can be right around the corner it, and a lot of times relationships and love can come when you least expect it so rather than focusing on the fact that I haven't found it yet or you know it's taking too long focus on making sure you're gonna be ready for it when it comes because the reality is that a lot of people meet that individual that they have deep feelings for that they have that connection with but they're not ready. They haven't healed from the past, or they, they run away from the situation, or they push that person away in some, uh, some way, shape, or form. I mean, one way or another, they're not able to fully embrace the opportunity when it comes. So if you wanna be hopeful while you're single, continue to prepare to receive that relationship. Know that it will come. It will come, trust. It comes for plenty of people, but you got to be in the right place, the right mindset, on the right path to be able to not just receive it, but to make sure you can keep it and make it successful. And we're back with my wonderful guest, Dr. Brantley, as we discuss not only abstinence, but we're going to get into the dating conversation too. But before we're ready for dating, we really need to come to a place of mm. wholeness mm -hmm. within ourselves, mm -hmm. which is something we talked about in the first half, just you know that renewal yes. piece and taking the time mm -hmm. to be quiet, to yes. find out who you are, for you to become a whole person. Correct, correct. Right? Many people think about this. You know, there might be people who are watching right now and they're like, oh, maybe this is meant for me to do because I'm, I'm seeing this show. And I can tell them, yes, yes, it's meant for you to do. But they're naysayers mm -hmm. in their life. It could be they could be in their family, yes. on the outside. They could even be going to church with them. This is why you have to know your walk. Everybody's walk is different in mm -hmm. God, but it's by the line of the word of God. That's mm -hmm. the key. And so you understand every great person has had a walk alone experience, even mm -hmm. our savior, Christ. He yeah. had to get away from the disciples, have that garden of Gethsemane time. So mm -hmm. as you renew your relationship, your first relationship is not with a man, it's with God. Yes. Because if, you, if, 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 if that love of God doesn't come down upon you mm -hmm. to renew, to revive, right. to refurbish, then you won't know how to love somebody else because you first have to love yourself, then you can love somebody else. That's the first thing. But because of abuse, mm. bitterness, or divorce, right. that person is so bad that they don't know how to love somebody else. So now if I'm on the path of yes, the journey, there's, there's 
in my book, I share about different types of mm -hmm. naysayers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the coin term, the haters yeah. or whatever, but I found that it's not so much that they wish you ill. Yeah. It's just that it's so far from their thought pattern right. in terms of how they feel that they could live their own lives. That's correct. That it's almost like you're coming against them by saying that you want to. Well, again, uh, I say simple, uh, ducks walk and quack and eagles fly. And you got to understand right. you are an eagle and people are going to have that same mentality. That's why, and, and there's no condemnation for anyone, right. but that's why you may have maybe four children by five baby daddies. I know mm -hmm. it doesn't add up, but I'm making a point here. Okay. And you're trying to find that love. Right. Well, let me give my body. Let me, no, no, yeah. no, no. Stop giving your body away. Give yourself to God first, and then God will send the person right. at the right time. But if you're yeah. giving yourself away, you're getting peace here, a peace there, a peace yeah. there, then by the time the man does come in your life, you're in five different places. Right. So that's why you want that wholeness, that private time yes. to get yourself, don't preach Bradley, get yourself <laughs> together so that God can bless you with, with right. who you want you to be. Because you don't want to be in a place where you don't have anything left to give and of that's value what that's and what that you're so damaged on the inside that even when Mr. Wright does show up, you can't be Mrs. Wright. Women for him. are so valuable. The last thing God created oh. was not a man. Yes. He was a woman. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I tell me in the counseling, listen, women are so powerful. God was so wondered by this. He brought a gift to man. Right. That's powerful. Yes. He didn't say, all right, Adam, go find her. No, he brought Eve to Adam. Right. That's how powerful you got. But women, because of being low self-esteem mm -hmm. about themselves, they put themselves in that place. And then when the snag of tooth, no walking, no job guy walks by, <laughs> oh, my bow. No, he's everything else but a bow. Right, right, right. And and also that the, the word in scripture that they mm. use for when God made Isha yes. is, is that he crafted her as almost like a, a master craftsman. Yes. So yes. this was like the final... Touch. It was a, It was the last thing. I mean, I, I mean, think about it. Uh -huh. The last thing I created was y'all. Yeah, that's powerful. I like that. I, I, I mean, I, he did this. He did the lights. Right. He did the moon. And it was sun. all good. All it was good. all good. All good. So, I think the reality that tends to mm. hold people back even more than naysayers is the reality that it's a difficult walk. I don't want to make it seem like it's an easy one, especially if you've been married before Correct. or in a relationship before, Correct. and now you're deciding that, you know, I'm going to walk this walk of abstinence, mm -hmm. celibacy um, until I am married. Not until you're engaged. Until you didn't go there, did you? <laughs> you're married. Yes, I yeah. did go there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I also talk about the fact that there are you need to go into this understanding there are going to be days that you cry yes. and that you cry alone. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, again, it, 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 but see, in that alone time is when you really discover God. Mm -hmm. You know, God is not really discovered where the church is packed, the organ is going, but Elijah, very perfect. You know, in, in, in 1 Kings 19, mm -hmm. he has a great experience, but he's low, depressed, even suicidal. Right. God comes in different forms, but he didn't hear God until a still, small voice right. and that's when you hear God right. and when God says to you don't preach brother. when God says to you <laughs> I'm with you yes. then when you hear that and there's nothing else around but him yes. then you know you are in the right place mm. at the right time and let me add this too sometimes God moves us to put us in position. We don't like where we're going to, mm -hmm. but he's moving us there so you can be available to move into the next realm that God wants you to do as well. All right. So, you know, there are times that um, I think that I actually heard mm. the Lord's audible voice sure. or I felt the spirit of God yeah, just yeah. give me that yeah. warm hug that I needed Nothing at like the it. time. Like uh, I, I really, I tell women especially mm. that you have to be aware of your own physiologic, Correct. physiological Big word, uh, yeah, clock yeah, because yeah, yeah. there are going to be times of the month, every month, yep. don't be surprised. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. And if you know it's going to happen, mm -hmm. that you, you know, you were like, yeah, yeah then you can offset it. You can plan to manage that. When you plan those times, and even for guys, you know, the nocturnal things right. they have, yes. like, oh, yeah, exactly. it, it's natural. Mm -hmm. But it's understanding that I'm not going to make that define me. Mm -hmm. And that's what women have to understand is that even though I've made bad decisions in the past, even though I'm going through this, this is not going to define me. And that's what, right. what the enemy does. He puts that guilt, and that's a whole other issue. Yeah. He puts that guilt, 
that condemnation. Even the church right. puts that guilt. Well, you know, you've had all these children, different men. God, there is nothing. The, the text says, is there anything too hard for God? Nothing. nothing. Nothing is too hard for God. When we come back, we're going to take this a little deeper. I know you're waiting to talk about the dating. <laughs> I need his help on that. So when we return. <laughs> Welcome back to Don't Give Up and Win. And yes, it's time to talk about the dating game. Or is it a game at all? It's very, very, very serious. And a few years ago, mm -hmm. I found out about courtship yes. versus the idea of dating. And mm -hmm. then I got really into this idea of yeah. courtship. It yeah. should be courtship and not dating. Mm -hmm. I don't date. Mm -hmm. I would only court. court. Right. Right? right? And in, in my mind, um, you know, courtship means the two of you have decided that mm -hmm. you're Exclusive. engaging mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. Exclusively yeah. with the intent right. of marriage All being the, the bottom mm -hmm. line, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure if that's really where everyone starts. So talk to me, talk to us about this dating versus Everybody courtship. is different. Yeah. I will say, though, is that you got to be careful uh, because there's so many foxes out there mm -hmm. in sheep clothing. And okay. so one of the biggest thing I tell women to do is that that first date is the most important one. Okay. How much is that guy willing to? to spend really? without any benefits. Really? So if he say, well, you know, let's go out to McDonald's, eh, you're not the guy. Uh, let's go out to a pizza parlor, eh, not the guy. Uh, we're talking about a 20, 25, $30 plate dinner. Now we're talking because he has to see and experience your value without touching the value. Okay. And so, so many women will take, oh, I got a date, he's taking me. No, no. Where's he taking to you? Because that's saying the value he has for you immediately. Okay, so let's let's talk here because mm -hmm. I want to make sure I'm capturing our millennial generation and all of that. Yeah. So I have a few relationship coach friends who are guys. Okay. And one of them gives the advice that twenty dollars is more than enough for a first date. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> the woman no twenty dollars. Ain't no twenty dollar. I, I behave on what I want to say, <laughs> but you're not a twenty dollar. Don't say Brantley, but you're worth more than twenty dollars. Uh, uh, you know what twenty dollars is? It's you might not be the one, so I don't want to spend too much money on you. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. If you see a woman's value, mm -hmm. I mean, look at the value here. I mean, so you know what? There ain't no problem with spending more than twenty bucks. Okay. And he's doing it with trying to find out who you are, right. as you're trying to find out who he is too, as well. That's okay. how it works. With twenty dollars, cheap date. Okay. Get out of here. Right. Next. <laughs> I said it. Okay. I, I said you. it. Okay. Now's time for the don't give up and win takeaway moment. Hey, what's going on? Today I'm going to tell you some of the deeper reasons why relationships fail. These aren't all the reasons, but these are some of the main reasons that don't get spoken about enough. And the first thing is you didn't belong in that relationship in the first place. The reality is that many of you are choosing to be with someone because you're lonely, because they seem like the best option, because you're being pressured to be in a relationship for all kinds of different reasons other than you truly being in love and into this individual. And when there's not a true connection in that relationship, it's going to fail. If you know deep inside they're not best for you, there's nothing you can do to change that. You will never be good enough for the wrong person. So thinking that you can somehow force this situation to go the way that you want it to go, it's not gonna happen. You have to be honest with yourself and understand that if it's just not there, if a true foundation of a connection does not exist, move on. The other reason why relationships fail is horrible communication. 
Listen, screaming and yelling at each other is not talking to each other. You have to be willing and open to expressing yourself fully to your partner, but not just expressing yourself, listening to them. Are you as good of a listener as you are a talker? And when you are talking, are you giving the message in a way that they can receive and process it? Because if not, you're not gonna get anywhere with the conversation. So two people in a relationship have to be able to sit down and have a mature discussion where they both articulate what they need and discuss how they're gonna resolve any issues and listen to each other. That's what you have to do. And the third and last reason for today why relationships fail is too many people are selfish instead of selfless. Listen, a relationship is not about what you're going to get. It's about what you're going to give. Does this person inspire you to give to them, to enjoy giving to them, doing for them, embracing their needs? When you have two people who embrace their partner's needs and take a joy in pleasing each other, you're going to have an amazing relationship. Being selfish will kill it. Plain and simple, there is no room for selfishness in a relationship. You have to be selfless. So that's it for today. I'm just giving those few reasons. But like I said, there's so much more we can talk about. If you have any questions, you can email me, contact at stephanspeaks.com. I'll see you in the next video. I already knew that I was gonna go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely wanna major in political science. After that, I'm gonna get my law degree. Then I'm gonna come back to Detroit, boost the economy become the mayor or something, try to make the situation better for other people. I feel like I owe it to the city. I'm determined, it's, it, it's gonna happen. My name is Justin and I am your dividend. I come from a big family, I'm the oldest of six. To me, being the first person to go to college, it's like setting a standard, you know? My little brother is eight years old now. I challenge his curiosity. I challenge him to dream. I have to paint a picture for him that he can look up to and live up to and possibly be better than. My name is Jaquez, and I am your dividend. Don't you give up now? Don't you give up now? All right. So let's get into the dating piece because mm -hmm. before you know it, our time will be gone. $20 a day. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. You know, my journey has been 16 years mm -hmm. and many people hear that and they say bravo, kudos mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. But I've also like not been dating. So, <laughs> so yeah. how, how do we get back out there? You know, I'm looking at this wonderful book, Sin Single Ladies mm -hmm. Get Ready for Your Man. Mm -hmm. So thou shouts for dating mm -hmm. as you await your husband to be. Yeah. What are some of those thou shouts? You take it very slowly, and I will say very carefully, if you do use Instagram, mm -hmm. social media, Snapchat, please don't show a very sexual provocative picture. Right. Because you're showing the wrong right. thing. Yeah. You want to show a very conservative look, and if the guy really wants to know you, he will slowly and diligently and godly unwrap the gift. So the way it works, you start the dating game and by the time the pageant is totally exposed, it's your wedding night. That's how you do it. But let's pull it back a little bit. Let's mm -hmm. be a little bit slower and practical. Mm -hmm. I hear all these things like if you see someone who's attractive and you smile mm -hmm. and then you look away for the next 15 minutes and don't smile again, no, then they I'm know you're interested. <laughs> all these kind of weird things. I mean, how, how does it work? As a woman, am I supposed to be responsive, non-responsive? Well, why do we limit the Spirit of God only in church? Mm. Okay, Spirit of God, give me direction. Mm. How do you want me to handle this? Mm. I mean, uh, Naomi, in a spiritual sense, was like a Holy Ghost to Ruth. Naomi was giving wisdom to Ruth right, to right. get the boy. So yes. Spirit of God, give me wisdom of how I see someone that looks great, but give me the wisdom, give me discernment. And mm -hmm. that's a key word a lot of single women do not have. Discernment. Right. Let me know, is this the right guy or the wrong guy? If the guy's married, number one, <laughs> the, you don't he's need discernment. Okay. okay, you don't need discernment. Okay. He's the wrong guy, even if he's separated. Don't care. Even if, yep. I want to see okay. divorce paper. I want to see divorce paper, your FICO score, your birth certificate. I want to see your passport. Okay. So, okay, Seriously. so I've seen these questions mm -hmm. also on social media. Mm -hmm. If it's agape love, if mm -hmm. it's real love, should yeah. we be concerned with the FICO score? score? Yeah. Cause I didn't know how much money you gonna be, how much you owe. 
brother man. All right, but but when I know that, yeah. then I can decide whether or not I want to. It is not the kicker, right? But my people die. Don't preach, Bentley, for a lack <laughs> of what knowledge. knowledge. Yeah. And a lot of people, even myself, uh, I'm going through some things right now because I didn't have knowledge. I have knowledge now, but when I got married, I had no knowledge. And a lot of couples go into a relationship without knowledge. Oh, she looks good. She got the hips. She got the thighs. She got the breasts. And, oh, he got muscles. No, 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 right, no, no. Right, no. Right. Can we go a little deeper? Right, because right. that's what you really want in the dating. Right. Uh, I'm put it this way. The more the person reveals to you, mm -hmm. that's the person that you want to keep dating with. But the person keeps being CIA, FBI, internal, convert. convert. Yeah. Okay. What about this idea that if you're dating someone, you should not be social media friends? Uh, <laughs> if you're dating someone <laughs> and it's exclusive, especially, right. we know each other's passwords. Oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I need to know who all of your Marys are and all your Josephs are okay. to make sure everything is cut. Right. Because if we're exclusive, there are no backup plans. And that's what people do right, right, sometimes right. in dating. No, there's no backup plan. And, and as Christians, I don't think you should date. Now, this is me personally. After six months of dating, that mm. flesh is like. <gasps> right. 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 Yeah. Especially if it's working. Especially right? if it's working. So you're saying short engagements? Yeah. Okay. And with good counseling. With good counseling. Good, godly counseling. But Not from Cousin Bobo either. How soon would you bring in that good counseling? Uh, as soon as God is given like the green light, mm -hmm. immediately bring somebody in who is not your cousin, not your uncle, but professional, that knows stuff. And because you want someone to be real with you, okay. not someone that's going to, uh, you know, and no, let's right, be right, real right, about what's right. going on in a relationship. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I remember I did do marriage counseling and he did see the flip flop, right? Mm -hmm. But he thought that if he, he's told us that, that uh, mm -mm. we were going to do what we wanted to do mm -mm. anyway, mm -mm. you know, but mm -mm. you have to say it. That's your You have to, if problems are discovered, and, and, and that's what good marriage counseling versus dating is. Let's find out the problem. Let's not find out what look good on you. Mm -hmm. Let's find out the problems. Let's find out the issues. Because if we can work through the issues, yeah. If we can't work through issues, Thank you, good friend. See you in church. No problem. Well, thank you, good friend. Glad to have you <laughs> on, you on the show. Listen, if you want to know more, we're going to put up his all his contacts so that you can find Dr. Brantley. Uh, he not only covers sing singleness, but uh, marriage counseling as well and many other topics. So until next time, go ahead and be your very own best hero because the greatest hero of all said that you were worth it when he gave his life for you on the cross. Show with Jackie Wayans. This is Dr. T. Charles Brantley of Strong Marriage. I'm on the set of Don't Give Up and Win. Tune in to the very best. I already knew that I was going to go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely want to major in political science. After that, I'm going to get my law degree. Then I'm going to come back to Detroit, boost the economy, become the mayor or something try to make the situation better for other people. I feel like I owe it to the city. I'm determined, it's, it, it's gonna happen. My name is Justin, and I am your dividend.